Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of The Punter, taking a look at this weekend sporting action from a betting perspective, trying to find the best value possible for you. And it's a fantastic weekend of sport, especially if you like the NFL because it's Super Bowl weekend, also great Premier League action, although some sport affected by the cold weather, the punter isn't affected by the cold weather, unless you squint, in which case you can see my nipples through this shirt. <laughs> Uh, got a great panel of experts for you as ever. Standing in for Russ Wiseman from Sporting Bet, Chris Graham. Chris, Hi. welcome aboard. How you doing, Nick? Yeah, I'm very good. How are you? Yeah, good. Dan, nice to be here. Um, Russ is up in Leeds today, uh, sorting out the shambles that have been created by Ken Bates, Sh uh, Sack and Simon Grayson. Appalling decision. And Russ is the man to sort that out. Yeah, yeah. I'm we, sceptical. We've, 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 we've got him at 40 to 1 to be the next league manager. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's trying to pitch his cause there. Every chance. Uh, well, welcome. Uh, enjoy yourself. We look forward to hearing from you. And uh, Neil, how, how was your week? Well, actually, look, champion trainer Paul Nichols. He's, uh, he's talking about how uh, this legend is back to his best in the build-up to the Gold Cup. February for me is the build-up to Cheltenham, and I am back to my best. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you, I've had a, I, you're I, self billing yourself as the legend. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the, he goes on to say that you know it's no, there's nothing wrong with getting old, and you don't have to retire early. And uh, I'm, I'm starting to come around to that view now. That's impressive. Well, uh, we'll look forward to you continuing to peak throughout the month of February. And Alan Alga from uh, Blue Square is here as well. Hey, as ever, I'm good, how are you? Yeah, very well, thanks. Yeah, enjoyed the football last weekend? Another um, successful Last tip. weekend, uh, we, we got a winner home in the in the Blue Square Bet Premier with uh, Mansfield, but I opposed Arsenal and obviously they went 2-0 down. Um, oh, I God, get, Alan. I, what are you trying to do to me? I, <laughs> I did get out of the position a little bit because I actually thought they were on top during the game. I didn't get out enough to make it profitable, but okay. um, I, I just think that they just capitalised on that good spell of and pressure. But people that are new to the punter may not know that you're an Arsenal fan, but you constantly oppose them, which well, is we a got lot the, of fun. We got the money in midweek as well, so um, we, I managed to claw back some money in midweek by opposing them at Bolton, and we'll continue to do so until the market gets it right. I must admit, we had that long conversation last week though about how it's great value when a, when a really fancy team goes one nil behind to be on the opposition team. Mm. I thought I had some of the best bets I've had in the last. 12 months backing Villa when they were 1-0 up. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. yeah, they don't always win those ones, do they? No, no. I mean, they did the opposite, obviously. They came back from a two-goal deficit to draw mm. against QPR in midweek. So there's some strange results about. I think it started over the, the New Year um, set of games. And there are plenty of comebacks, plenty of high scores. And that just seems to be happening at the moment. And punters need to get a grasp of exactly where those go goals are going. Yeah. And Chris, um, just to recap the, the handshake bet, yeah, yeah, you ended yeah. up paying out on that, right? Yeah, we did. This was uh, the, the Anton Ferdinand and uh, John Terry handshake, of course. And um, it, it caused you know huge ructions with punters in the three days leading up to the game. We, we originally meant 72 that they, that they wouldn't shake hands. And that was uh, back then in one to six. But it was a bit of confusion what we should do. And so I decided to be paid out on on no handshake and, uh, and refunded on, on yes handshake. And now we're getting a country. New England captain. Though. Yeah, fantastic. Have you, boy, have you boys got prices on this yeah, one? We yeah, got we prices, do, uh, we've got prices. We've got prices four to seven Gerard to be the, f the favourite to be the captain for the first game. There are our prices there. Scott Parker, nine to two. A lot of support for Scott Parker um, when we went up with the prices. It was six to one originally. Um, Gareth Barry was only five to one, but they flip-flopped to second favourites there. And Scott Parker... I, I could fancy him there because I just think that he's the one that's guaranteed to be on the pitch for the majority of the games. Um, obviously, Rooney can't even be quoted because he's not, he, he's not eligible for that game. Obviously, he would be a certain name I've, on the team. I've got sheet. a test to try and discover who's going to be next England captain. You just put England's brave in front of the name, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> whichever sounds most yeah. likely. Chris, where are, you, where are the sporting bet prices on this? We were, we were six to four in Jad this morning when I got into the office. So I think we're now, we're now one to two. But mm -hmm. I agree with Alan. I think Scott Parker's a good show. I, I just think overall it's pretty embarrassing, isn't it, what's happened here? The fact that this man was stripped of the captaincy two years ago, then it was given back to him, which was hugely controversial. And re-stripped. And re it's like being a substitute I mean, being subbed. Uh, yeah. I mean, worse still, Ferdinand coming out saying that he doesn't want it by default. So he was uh, 10 to 1 chance, straight out to 16 to 1 off the back of those comments. I mean, not wanting to captain yeah. your country. I know the circumstances surrounding it, people could say that obviously if he's pushed his brother into this prosecution of Terry, He's somehow the architect of all this happening in the first place. And maybe he doesn't want to benefit from that. But the fact that we can't <laughs> find one and, and, and we're scratching around and Fabio Capello's got to then take a squad that's been affected by outside things to go and win this tournament. I mean, the, the more important thing is the England price. And we're out to 9-1 to one England. 
Oh, really? That's that's big for off a major the back of that, eight, eight one out to nine to one off yeah. the back of this. He's a shambles. Uh, well, let's recap what else happened last week on the show because uh, Neil, you, your charity bet uh, hasn't happened yet, has it? Uh, no, but uh, I, I tipped up the uh, the artist director, uh, <laughs> the one who uh, no one can pronounce. Has an ambitious. That's exactly um, right. He's uh, he's now four to one on to be the best director, so uh, I'm quite happy so with actually, that bet. So Fantastic value. Bet yeah, I'm wishing. Already. I'm wishing we'd have had a bit more on for the kids now. I mean, couldn't they? Have, couldn't they have had a fourteen hundred to win eight or something? <laughs> I mean, can we? Can we have used three weeks' money? Yeah, we don't try and get out the whole <laughs> the kids charity money. That's not. That's not what we do. Uh, I was thinking the kids might want to hedge with the. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take a poll. Or something. I mean, the movies now. The artist has a movie is now five to one on to be the the best movie. So. Um, so they moved closer together because you said that yeah. we couldn't understand why they were. Apart well, the artist the was the artist was too to seven as best movie and he was four to seven best director yeah. so they're both shortened but uh, yeah presumably uh, all the punter viewers have all run out and had their 500 on at four to seven well that's what you're so good at and that's what all the good professional bettors are so good at finding little anomalies like that where there's a difference between the two prices um, let's uh, talk Premier League because it really changed this week in the in perhaps in the perception of some punters minds Chris how do you see City losing and Man United winning. Well, well I, I thought the price of Man City on, on Tuesday night was all wrong. I couldn't believe that it. it was short. Uh, uh, sorry, his largest ten to eleven on Tuesday night, and I got I got involved he heavily <laughs> to my cost. Um, so I was I was really surprised at that. It, it does show a, a, a slight crack in uh, in Man City, but I still think. 13, I, I'm not, none of these prices appeal to me, to be quite honest, if I was a punter. Five to four United, no, they've got too many games, too many difficult games. To, these away games at the club Chelsea on Sunday, of course, and then, <coughs> then they've got Man City later in the season as well. Man City just look, for me, the stronger outfit. Uh, Spurs at 12 to one. Spurs, for me, rem remind me, like, you know, if, if you see a girl in a nightclub, you, you, you approach her. But then you back off at the last minute thinking, oh no, it's like, it's like spoils like that. They're, they're almost approaching being contenders. Ian, is it Ian Holloway? <laughs> 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 they just they, they look like they could be contenders and then you think, oh, they better not. That's, that's no So you're staying away from a punter's point of view. Either of you two feel differently? Tottenham are not it? lucky enough to be approached by Chris. <laughs> 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 um, I, I know that Flash has got a strong, strong view on this. I don't know if we're hearing from him later, but... Uh, he, he thinks that Manchester United should have been a lot closer to City um, throughout this. And I think the panel had disagreed with that view all along. Um, but here he is now. And I, I know he thinks that that's six to four's value. And I can't disagree because now, that, now if you look at the fixtures, um, Manchester United have got a few hard fixtures out of the way. Um, City have got slightly easier fixtures towards the end. And Tottenham, if only they'd, they'd won against Wolves and held on against Man City, they'd be real, real contenders mm. here. But so they that, didn't. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, Flash, just, just tell us your Man United, because you've been firm on this the whole season, right? Yeah, because they're uh, course and distance winners and they kept winning games without being totally strong. I mean, they even went out to as far as 7-2 to two, and I just couldn't understand it because I felt that Man City, they were really reliant on quite a few or, or few individuals. And then them individuals obviously gone to African nations, then got suspended. And, and I just feel that Man United were going to just keep going and get stronger as the injuries uh, came back. So for me, Man United are favourites and, and, and I have had Man United all the way through. Interesting stuff. Uh, the gap could open up on, on Saturday. I mean, you've got, yeah. you got City mm. at home to Fulham yeah. and then United have got one of their few remaining tough games to negotiate on Sunday. But I, I think that they'd be quite happy with a point and, as Flash says, let it go to those games towards the end of the season where they're renowned for those back-to-back -back wins week in, week out. OK. Uh, we've also got, uh, as ever, Nigel Seeley, the betting butler, with us and we'll get into his football expertise a little bit throughout the show. Uh, Nigel, what's your view on the title race? Slightly differing views here. Uh, I, well, I think that uh, I've always thought that Manchester City were the team to, to beat all the way through. And uh, I, there's nothing that's really changed my opinion of that. I think they've got the best squad. I think they've got the best team. Uh, the only thing about it is Manchester City probably have the best manager. So um, I, I think more than two of them keep, keep taking uh, points, dropping points. I still think Tottenham are back in the mix. I said two three weeks ago, that I thought they would probably be out of the mix. But... Oh, what I saw on uh, Wigan and on Tuesday, they were exceptional. Gareth Bale was virtually unbearable. So I still think Tottenham at 14 to 1 out of the three options maybe look, look to be the most uh, the value because I think the Manchester United and Manchester City could definitely drop points on the running. Tottenham have got this hard run of fixtures over the next three or four games and then they've actually got an easy run in. So from a betting point of view, would that make you more likely to take them now or more likely to 
if you if you're interested in them, or might like to wait and see what happens to their price. Well, I, I, I don't think, and that sounds an old cliche, but I don't think there is anything that's an easy fixtures. I mean, you look at Everton the way we thought that was an easy fixture. You look Mancini at some of the points that Manchester United have dropped at this stage of affairs. I think they're all very, very tough. And, I, and I, I'm not a, a fan of looking at fixtures and saying, oh, well, these have got easier ones and these have got harder ones. I think they're still at the bottom. And you've seen from the, the Premier League this season that anybody's capable of anybody on their day. I mean, Blackburn have beat Manchester United. I thought that was an easy fixture. So. I just look at consistency, and, and I think Tottenham are probably the most consistent. If I was backing all these teams, uh, short odds on every week, I think Tottenham would be the one I would back every week because they do do a number on these teams. A barring against Wolves a couple of weeks ago, that was the only time that they actually slipped up. And, and I, I, I still think that, you know, they're only 14 to 1 because they're, they're, they're Tottenham, they've got a history, and they're not, not in this position. But uh, what I saw on Tuesday, that they, for the first hour, they, they, they looked absolutely awesome. And they're the team playing the best football and the best quality. And, and regardless of what's happening off the field with the manager, I, I still think there are, I still think there, there's a long way to go here. And I think Manchester United will drop points. I think Manchester City will drop points. And they could just sneak up on, on, on the radar. See, Chris, Nigel's actually going up to the girl. He's buying yeah, her he's a drink. He's, he's, got, he's, got, he's, he's, he's getting his reward, <laughs> definitely. You like to think at the end of the night. No, I love Tottenham. For me, they're the story of the season. And I, would, I, I don't support any English team, but I, I would love it if, if, if Tottenham won the league. I think they're a breath of fresh air. They're exciting. They're lovely to watch. And I think, for me, they've been the story of the season. I just feel they're just not quite good enough. To well, wait, so, wait, but you're not English. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, but people, people assume, because I live in London, that I must support a Premier League team. I don't. Uh. Okay. You don't have any bias towards a Premier League team at all? Um, Sir Alex Ferguson, obviously, I'm fairly There you spot. go, I, I knew, knew there was something in there. <laughs> but it's, it's interesting you mentioned Sir Alex Ferguson because um, this time last year, I think four or five teams were, were maybe in contention for the Premier League title. There was a great article in the Racing Post by Bruce Millington and he judged the strengths uh, of each team and then said at the end, if Alex Ferguson was managing any one of these five teams, I'd want to back them for the title. They're all in varying positions, but he just said it come down to the manager because they were that close together. And he was proved right by that. And I think that that could be the factor here. You know, Mancini saying in, in midweek that he didn't prepare correctly for mm. Everton. I mean, I mean that, that's a crazy thing to say when you've got bosses that have pumped in as much money as, as his bosses have. Um, and then obviously you've got... Um, I Matt. felt like maybe he was protecting his players, and people kind of jumped on him. Really? Well, I, I sort of. I, I was, I was just saying because I think like he's quite. Public I think he's quite defending in, your players. I think he's quite he an intelligent answer, man, though. And I just sort of. It was such a mm. weird thing to say. I thought, I wonder why he said that. I wondered if he just. He doesn't didn't have want to his... answer that question, though, does no. he? In that way, I mean, no. he could have easily steered it away from from both of those angles, whether it was was his players or his own preparation. Obviously, Tottenham have got their own troubles. I think Harry Redknapp's going to have to get on a flight up yeah. to Liverpool to even be on the bench. Um, uh, for their game on Monday, um, and then you look at Chelsea. I think mean, Villas Boas coming under pressure from Mourinho in the in the papers today. I mean, they're, they're 66 to one, so you know they're not even title contenders. So mm. the real course and distance form is with Alex Sir Alex Ferguson. And he when you gets said get out. on a flight, I was expecting you to say to Northern Cyprus or a country without an extradition <laughs> treat. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he's trying to escape that much. No, it's not that bad. Um, okay, well that's an overview of the title race. There's some fantastic features this weekend, as I'm sure you know. We'll get into them match by match and try and find the value for you after. After this break. Welcome back to The Punter. We're going to look at the weekend's football. It should be a big weekend for football betting because a lot of the racing, the horse racing, is cancelled uh, and there's some really big fixtures. So it should be fun, right? Especially Sunday. Yeah, especially Sunday. Um, if you like your NFL and your football, then yeah, you, you, you're, laughing. You're, uh, you're locked in on Sunday, definitely. Yeah, yeah I'm there for sure. Um, let's start with uh, Chelsea Man United by dint of it being the biggest game, in quotes. Uh, Chris, how do you see this one? That's a tough one, isn't it? A really tough one. I think as a punter, it's tough. And I think as a compiler, it's tough. If you play the odds compiler or something to price this one, I wouldn't know where to start, really. Huh? Uh, but we, we're, we're just Chelsea narrow favourites. Uh, only, despite the fact they've only won two and eight, Man United have been really strong away from home this year. The stats point to Man United to get the three points here, but it's just something 
just a gut feeling I've got. So, you know, I just think Chelsea will get something for this game. Andre Villas-Boas, obviously under a lot of pressure at the moment. Uh, he can't afford to lose this game. I really, I really sincerely believe that. I think if you offer them a draw right now, he'd take it. He'd, he'd grab your hand. Does that maybe, is that maybe true for both teams? I wonder if both teams would take a draw right now. No, I think so, Quite yeah. possibly, yeah. Ah, yeah. I think when we were discussing the title odds then, I think Strike Exposure I'm quite happy to get this one out of the way um, with a point. Um, although we'll see the weakness in Chelsea and the fact that, that, that they're obviously struggling at the moment and, and maybe this is a good opportunity for them to go and get to get three points and the fact that they're they're slight outsiders for this game let's have a look uh, at the prices shall we um, they're, they're slight outsiders do you see any value for from a punting point of view um, well I just think that you, you really have to pick and choose in these games between the big teams you are getting bit much bigger prices on teams that are often odds on so then you've got to make a, a decision as a one-off single rather than the fact that United Week in, week out, you know, they're, they're, they're three to one on at home. You decide whether to put them in a multiple or not. You don't have mm. to think too much about them. Now you're seeing them at 15 to eight and asking yourself, well, uh, you know, I, I've seen them win. I've seen them play well this season. They've got a decent away record this season. They're up against a struggling Chelsea team. Am I going to be kicking myself at six o'clock when they've beaten Chelsea 2 0? And I could have had 15 mm. to eight about a team that I usually see at three to one on. Is it enough to entice um, you, Neil? Um, you usually actually, stay funnily, away from the big enough, games? I usually, as, as you know, I usually stay away from these kind of games. And, and Chris says, you know, it's, a, it's a, a compiler's night. I don't think it's a compiler's nightmare, to be honest with you. I, I, don't, I, I can't see that you can be massively out on this game. If you price it up, I mean, I, I could see an argument for saying that Man United should be slightly shorter and Chelsea should be slightly mm. bigger. Chelsea are a bit out of form. Uh, they were rubbish in midweek, although they did cost me uh, at the end their painful goal. Mm. Um, but uh, actually, I, I, you know, Alan, you, said, you made a compelling argument the other week uh, for Man United being a decent favourite over Arsenal and said they should be odds on. Um, Surely Chelsea are not like, I know you kind of got a bit of a downer on Arsenal at the moment, but Chelsea are having sort of slight similar problems, aren't they? Yeah, they certainly are. And, <coughs> and, and don't forget that Arsenal went and won 5-3 um, at Stamford Bridge. So, you know, if we're saying that, that United should be odds on, I know football doesn't really work like that on the comparative But you, but you, form, you, but kind, of, you kind of thought that, man, you were a, a big price at 6-4, to 13-8 to, yeah, to beat the, Arsenal. I'll so doesn't, big, doesn't that make them a really big price at 15-8 to no, beat Chelsea? I'll tell, you, I'll tell you the big difference here. And unfortunately, it's another Arsene Wenger dig. Arsene Wenger... <laughs> <laughs> press record. Press record. Press record. <laughs> yeah. Arsene Wenger will not have looked at Manchester United coming to the Emirates as a game where he could say... Now, what can we do not to get beat here? Where can we shore up in defence? Where can we affect the way that they play? Andre Villas-Boas will be working on that all week. And that is why they're not a fantastic odds-on bet. Um, and, and that's why they're not a team that should appear at odds-on. Because Chelsea will be thinking about this game. And, and it comes back to my key point that Arsene Wenger does not think about games. He sends his team out onto the pitch to play in a certain way. If they win, it looks fantastic, as they used to do in the past. Now, more often than not, they're getting beat or they're being held to draws like the one in midweek. And it's all falling apart. And it's a I very love, simple I thing. I love getting this every it's week. Not, we haven't even got onto the <laughs> Arsenal not, game I was yet. Say, so that's, not, that's, that's your view on Chelsea Man United. Is that well, yeah. My view on Chelsea Man United is that Man, you shouldn't be odds on because Chelsea will at mm. least think about this game yeah. and prepare not to get well, beat. What, what, one we'll of big, one of Man United's biggest fans from a betting point of view is Flash. Do, does that? How does that translate into this game? Uh, I think Man United are quite a really good value, to be honest, because uh, not only are they uh, obviously informed, they've probably got the best away record, but they've got Nani, Jones and Young coming back this weekend uh, for selection. So again, uh, Alex Ferguson, he knows what he's got to do. And the one Flash, thing about can I, Chelsea... Flash, can on. I ask a question? Because, uh, you know, I've got this bet Rooney to be the top scorer. And yeah. they managed to get two penalties in the week, which would have been perfectly reasonable for him to take those and score two goals. And uh, he's sitting at home with his foot up on the couch. Well, he's got a bad ankle or something, has he? Well, I, I just think that they're not going to... With all the amount of games that they've got coming up, they've got Berbatov. And we mentioned this a few weeks ago, that Berbatov, Hernandez, Valencia, Nani, they're all going to score goals. Mm. So he's just going to keep him fresh because he knows that these boys will do the job. They, they do it every season. They turn the Christmas... Uh, period right out the way then they go full steam ahead and they use near enough every one of the 20 players 
Berbatov had a fantastic record last year against the, in, in those games where Flash is saying that um, Ferguson said, well, I'm relying on you. We've got an easy game uh, in betting terms or odds on. He probably didn't say that because uh, he wouldn't have been talking about <laughs> betting. But we're, you know, we're odds on to win. This is an easy game. Come in, score your goals and let me prepare for the other games. I mean, they got to a Champions League final off the back of that. Um, and Arsenal, in contrast, have got 19 goals Robin Van Persie or... Um, could have been 20 in midweek, but he hit the bar twice. But the next person's on four. So that yeah. shows the, quali- the difference in quality and, and what they've got to rely on. And I, I think your Rooney bet's a good one, but I think you are relying mm. on his selection a lot. Oh, yeah, he's got to actually play, otherwise it gets to yeah, be less that was of a good bet. <laughs> Two penalties. <laughs> He will definitely be playing because uh, what he's doing now is he's just giving himself a chance to recharge his batteries so that for the running, you'll see him start mm. every game of maybe the last 10. Sure, and sure. And that's what he does. Do you think he's a 100% about. starter on Sunday, Rooney? Yeah, I'd go uh, Rooney and uh, Hernandez because I think their movement, and, and we're talking about a Chelsea side here who can't keep clean sheets. And normally that's the leveller between Chelsea and Man United at Stamford Bridge, that you just cannot break Chelsea down. This year, chocolate fire guard. Mm. So uh, not for me. And Man United, a great value at 15 to 8. And, and I think that Man City may well slip up against Fulham. So I can see um, Man United going top after the weekend. OK, we'll get into that in just a second, Flash. Uh, let's hear from Nigel from the Bet Butler on, uh, on the big game. Where are you on this one? People seem to think Man United are value. Well, I, I can see where that argument is, but I mean, uh, this is a couple of points. I mean, Flash's Chelsea can't keep a clean sheet. They've kept clean, four clean sheets in the last six matches, so that suggests otherwise on that one. I know historically, I think the Vias Boas has gone to win games exactly the same as Mourinho. Anyone back in Manchester United as well, they've got massive crisis in goal. You're talking about a third choice goalkeeper going mm. in against Arsenal, one of the most physical teams in the Premier League. So that, that to me, is another, another worry. Major problems in the game. Chelsea under huge, huge pressure. Also, as well, Chelsea always seem to beat Man United at Stamford Bridge. The fans are up for it. It's their one last real big game of the season that they really want to do a number of them. And I, I, I think Chelsea, you know, could, could, could do. I think they could. I, I think personally, I'd be a layer of Manchester United. I want to get the draw running for me. And lastly, I mean, um, the uh, Chris said there about sporting bets compilers. I agree with Chalice. If you can't price up Chelsea, Man United in the Premier League, then you, 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 you will need to get another job really because this. This, this must be the easiest one of the season to do. But for me, I think as a punting point of view, it's very, very difficult. I think the bookmakers got it about right. But I would look at Manchester United and look at their goalkeeping crisis. I think that is a big, big negative to put anybody off back in them at 15 or 8. OK, well, I think we've done that pretty thoroughly. So let's move on to Man City's game. They're at home to Fulham. This is one of those games where they're supposed to routinely collect three points. Does the betting market reflect that? Is there any kind of interest in this one? Uh, yeah, well, Manchester City, big, big odds, the big odds for own favourites of the weekend. They're like one to four favourites to win this game. But I was at, I was at the reverse fixture of this match at Craven Cottage, and the first half, Manchester City should have been six or seven nil up. They were absolutely superb. They they played Fulham off the park, and then uh, they made two substitutions, took off uh, Silva and took off Aguero, and Fulham come back and got a draw and should have won it. Now, I was also at Fulham in the week, and they were it was a terrible, terrible game of football, but. Um, I just think that it all depends on Fulham's attitude. If Fulham go in and defend, and they, you know, the likelihood is they could go and defend, Manchester City would have quality to break them down. But backing them at one to four, it's it's a bit too short for me. I can see Fulham on the Asian handicap plus one and a half goals, something like that. Fulham definitely worth a bet because they are quite defensively strong. They've got a good formation going forward, and I think they could be could get it. But it won't be a hammering. But uh, I still think City will have enough quality. And, uh, and, and get through, but not really any attractive betting material at one to four for this match for me. You got to kind of like that plus one and a half because City have stopped scoring a little bit. I think Fulham don't score away though. That's the problem, mm-hmm. isn't exactly. it? They go away with a negative attitude. So uh, I, can't, I, I can't really fancy a bet in this game. Fulham, Fulham have got a fantastic <coughs> record at Man City. I think they've only lost two of their last nine. Um, at Man City, so um, going back in, in history. I think the first 20 minutes is going to be key in this game, though. Um, I think that the City fans could get on the backs of their team, especially after that Everton result. And if they don't break Fulham down early on, I think I would try and go for a draw in running or certainly, as uh, the bet butler says, maybe a plus one uh, for Fulham in, in this game. Chris Fulham are just so bad away, though, aren't they? I mean, they just, they've only scored seven times away from home this season. and I, 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 None of the 
three to ten doesn't appeal to me, but I think City to win to nil or City plus one in the handicap, we've got that about ten to eleven. I think that's the kind of thing I'd be getting involved in this game. Okay. There, was a, there was a stat earlier in the season when Fulham were away at, at uh, Arsenal when there was I think there was seven to one, eight to one on yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. And we said if you back them for all their away games over the last three seasons at that price, regardless of the opposition, you still wouldn't be in profit. So um, <laughs> maybe you do have to wait for them to get to prices like this before you back them. Well, Flash is uh, perhaps one of the few people that. If what you just said flashes true, you, you want to back, you want to oppose Man City in this game? Yeah, I mean, I just think that Fulham, have, uh, they're quite stubborn, they're really organised. I think they'll probably go 4 5 1 and try and flood the midfield. And they're good from set pieces, and I think they'll frustrate. I mean, I mean, I think the draw w would be good. I mean, if you can get Fulham ahead on the, on the handicap, then you obviously got the draw as well. And uh, yeah, I, I think Fulham could uh, banana skin Man City at the weekend. OK, well, uh, perhaps a little bit of an outside punt there if you want. Uh, let's move on to the next, the next biggest game of the weekend by default is Liverpool Spurs and a big game for both clubs. Who here still trusts Liverpool and still wants to back them in football games? Never, I'd never ever trust Liverpool at any time. They're just a, a nightmare to call. I mean, we've got them at eleven to ten. No thanks. I mean, it's just how could you back Liverpool eleven to ten at home to Tottenham? Uh, just always seem to do the opposite you expect. You know, they'll sometimes pl they'll play well against the big sides. Um, perform poorly like we saw against Bolton and stuff like that. They're just a nightmare to call and a, a punter's nightmare for me. Spurs, I think, are a, a decent price here, definitely. For what they've achieved this season, I think they should be, they should be shorter. My, my, my head, my heart says Spurs, my head says the draw. Liverpool and beating at home it's, this season, of course. But it, It's interesting that, that Liverpool are short and Spurs you can get at uh, 9-4, to 12-5 when, when Spurs are the better team this yeah. season. Right? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Um, someone pointed out to me last weekend that when Liverpool had beaten Manchester United in the first game on the Saturday in the FA Cup and Tottenham had already beaten uh, Watford to go through, they couldn't understand why Tottenham were the second favourites and Liverpool were the first favourites for the FA Cup right. before the other games were played. Because surely, on a neutral venue, you would yeah. have Tottenham favourites at the moment. I couldn't disagree with that, and I don't think this quite reflects um, so how why is correct that, just, that assumption just for, would be. For people at home, why is that happening? Is that just volume of money for Liverpool? It's is that all it is? It's absolutely what we've said yeah. for Reputation, the last... Yeah. I think, I think there's, a, there's, the last, there's one factor that we haven't really discussed, which is uh, the, the, the way Liverpool perform on the Asian market. Uh, I think the, the two uh, biggest gambling syndicates that have an effect on the Asian market uh, are run by uh, the owner of Brentford and the owner of Brighton. Mm. Uh, Matthew Benham and Tony Bloom and I think they use uh, a football modelling system uh, to look at games and uh, there's something that Liverpool are doing, I think it's to do with the number of shots they have in games, uh, that makes them always stick out on those systems. Nigel probably knows more about this than me. It's funny um, though. So when you I say, think, sorry just to that thought, when you say stick out you mean? I think that uh, Liverpool is one of the teams that, that these boys are historically going in and betting every single week. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's an anomaly in their model that makes that happen. Uh, and they seem to be heavily supported on the, on the Asian handicaps every yeah. week. I mean, it makes sense on the basis that um, they, they've hit the bar more times, hit the post and hit the bar mm. more times than any other team at home. They've had goalkeepers that have played against them out of this world at Anfield mm. this season uh, and had lots of man of the match performances. And I know that they just tick off chances for teams. They just mm. base their punts on chances for teams either right. way. But it's very strange that you mentioned two of the shrewdest people in the market at that end, mm. and also the fact that Liverpool are the sort of uh, the, the public. Team. Yeah. Well, they also, yeah, team. you're absolutely right. So you've right. got I two mean, spectrums yeah. betting on Liverpool So that, brings, and the, that just brings a, a, a weight of money. Well, so that's I another... Just that's to, that's I just want to bring Nigel okay. in on this. Uh, just get his perspective. Nigel, what do you think about this idea that statistically Liverpool have underachieved a little bit? Well, I think I think it's a bit of a myth, really, because if you look at the games that they're not expected to do well, they always win. So they probably present value all the time. You know, it's Manchester United's world, and when they're playing against the le lesser sides, they lose. So if you bet them to a level state, you probably still show a bit of a profit back in Liverpool. And also, you've got to remember that they're unbeaten still at home. Everyone goes on about how well they are, but at home, they're very, very good at home, and then they get draws. And so if, if you actually You've got lots of draws. If you laid Liverpool probably every game at home, you'd probably make money. But they, 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 they tend to do well against the big side. So effectively, the, a level stake punt is they probably you, make a small profit. Nigel, you made, you made a good point there because I've just checked in the Racing Post index and even though they've had about six or seven odds on failures mm -hmm. this season already in the Premier League, 
they're only minus one pound fourteen to a level pound stake mm. over time. So you make a so good point that they're winning at so big so prices. So that's what I mean. That's why I think the guys in Asia you spoke about there, why they look at them because they always are. They, if they do lose, they're always in running. They get back so they can get out and profit. They can trade out their position because that, the, the sentiment is always behind them. And when they're probably in position when they're, when they're underdogs, they always do well, which gives, gives you the upside. But on this game as well, the big factor is what well, Suarez is back. It's under, under, the, under the lights of Liverpool on a Monday night. You know, it doesn't really get much tougher than that for Tottenham. But saying that Tottenham are playing well, I think it'll be a belting of a game. And I could see it being a, a draw or something like that. But I mean, again, Liverpool, however much we keep saying about them, they are unbeaten at home in the Premier League. And they are a very, very tough nut to crack at Anfield. Yeah, uh, if we can get a price on Spurs bottling it, I'd like that because that's always worth a fiver. But let's um, not forget Spurs won 4 0 as well in the reverse fixture. They did, but we weren't trying, Chris. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely <laughs> true. Um, <laughs> Nigel, take us into the other televised game, which is perhaps the most interesting, or the, uh, well, one of the most interesting batting games, maybe. Newcastle Villa, uh, just because maybe it's close, or maybe Newcastle might be slightly overrated right now. Well, you say that. I mean, I think they're, I think they're overrated because well, the market seems to be overrated them because of the players they've lost to the African Nations Cup. But they're yeah. all back. They're, they're all come back now. They've all been. Uh, they, they really didn't perform out there. So they didn't, they're not exactly knackered, are they? So they didn't really do much. They, didn't <laughs> well, they much might be effort. too relaxed, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, the thing is with, with Newcastle, they've got an absolutely fantastic record against Aston Villa. I think they've only lost something like two in eighteen. But are, are, on paper, you look at this game and think it's an absolute banker home win. But you talk about Asian markets in the last two hours. Or so. It's been a big, big move against Newcastle. Now that can only be team news related. That suggests to me that Denver Bar has come back and he doesn't look fit, or Denver Bar's come back and he may be nursing a knot because the move has seen him go from 2.1 out to about 2.3, which is a massive, massive move, and the money's coming for Villa. But purely and simply from a from a match for me looking at it myself, I, th I think Newcastle look a decent bet and I think it's whether the market wants to go in and get enticed by the bigger prices you get on Newcastle but there is obviously a negative coming out and I, that can only suggest that one of their key players either the goalkeeper Krull or Denver Bar or maybe a, a check to OT who's come back one of them one of them is not fit that's quite that's the only thing I can imagine you've seen a similar move you heard anything about that um no really no our punters have been piling into Newcastle really at uh, 21 and 20. I, I think for me the, the last the recent games for these two sides sum up their season really. Aston Villa 2 0 up against Arsenal on Sunday, come back and, uh, and lose 3 2. The Newcastle getting battered by Blackburn on Tuesday mm. night, for, for, for what I heard, still managed to win the game 2 0. And I think it's been a great season for Newcastle. Alan Pardew will recover in the three points here. And I think it's, I think it's 21 to 20. I think that's, a, that's where I'll go. Like, huh? Neil, any thoughts on this? Or any thoughts on Newcastle and possibly being rated wrongly? Or uh, no? I don't have big thoughts on this one. I burned my fingers with Villa last week. I thought they were really disappointing generally. Um, I, I don't want to run out of time to quickly talk about Arsenal and Blackburn. Okay, although well, well, do that then. I know do Alan, that because, do I know that because Alan could about talk this. about it for an hour and a half. But just give us, give us your thoughts. Well, I just think, you know, <coughs> I made the point the other week when Blackburn were away at Everton, they do score a lot of goals away from home. Uh, and, uh, I, you know, I, I'm, generally I would be bearish of goals in football games. Uh, and I like to bet that way. But I couldn't in this game. I think Blackburn definitely will get a goal. Uh, in the game, so you know both teams to score or over two and a half goals might be a bet, or possibly just one all or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I, I just mm. think the big factor here, if you're going to oppose Arsenal or, or go for goals, um, is the fact that Yakubu is still suspended. Um, so he's, I think this is the last of his games suspended, and you'll notice that. It, I think if he'd have been in for the Everton game, they'd have probably won that game mm -hmm. and got your bet home, and also in midweek. They've not scored at home to a Newcastle side that was shipping goals at that time. So um, I, I would say that Arsenal will probably struggle in this game, but probably win by a, a, the odd goal. OK, um, well, you, you, almost never, you almost never steer a strong on Arsenal. You almost never tip them. So probably stay away <laughs> from that in one. that case. Oh, yeah, maybe. Um, that's your weekend's football done. After the break, I will pretend I know something about rugby. Don't go anywhere. You don't <laughs> want to miss it. Welcome back to The Punter, and this is the section of the show where we discuss legitimised, organised violence. Uh, first without pads and then with pads. We're doing uh, rugby and then the Super Bowl, of course. First of all, the Six Nations, which kicks off this weekend. And Neil, you were telling us during the break about, well, a pretty large investment somebody yeah, was making. Yeah, I, I, um, personally, I absolutely hate rugby. You know? It's <laughs> the most stupid sport ever. Uh -huh. So many stupid rules. But I love gambling on it. What a great gambling sport. 
Um, now, I have a friend who's very good at it. He, back, he bits in all these, uh, you know, uh, Aviva Premiership and the Rabico <laughs> Super Cup 20 nonsense. He had a, he, throughout the World Cup, he never put me wrong. We, we did quite well on it. I helped yeah. him get some bets on. And uh, I know for a fact he's had a, he's had a six-figure investment on six figures uh, France with the decimal point nations. at the end of the six figures. He's not messing That's around. A lot of money. Yeah, he's he's he you know he's one of those guys that anytime he has a nice win, he's just for the last three months so, going to have another ten grand. So here's something know. we haven't talked about too much on the show. We probably should. How hard is it, Chris, to get that sum of money in action if if you're so minded? Um, I think if, if 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 I guess if if it's the right kind of person really I who's placing it if, it, if it's positive business, I think... Uh, so that you, by the right person you mean a losing player? Um, yes. <laughs> that was you, that's what you that's said. Basically, <laughs> yeah. I mean that is the answer, these guys might tell you differently but yeah, if you're, if you're a big loser yeah. and you get would, sent would a you, hand would for you, Christmas, would you let Neil, you can have would you you let like. Neil bet a six figure sum? Would I hell? <laughs> well, they, <laughs> they, they might let me bet a six figure sum on you know, the Rugby World Cup, the Six Nations, the See, Football the World is, Cup, I but not on uh, Fleetwood versus Nantes. So just explain that for people at home, Al. It's because uh, the market's bigger and you can yeah, hedge I, the bets. We, we had this discussion a couple of weeks ago, and, and I actually think that y you were dead right in your assertion that if you want to come and have a bet on the derby with me, um, you know, every horse off for its life, and they're all trying to win a, a fantastic prize, and there's lots of other money in the pool, mm. then we'd probably be quite happy to lay you 50 grand. On the morning of the derby, if I try and do it six months before, you wouldn't lay me absolutely 30 not. quid. No, yeah. no, absolutely not, because you've probably got an <laughs> so. edge on the... Uh, so, as, as internet businesses, we can, both, we can both look at the way our customers bet, and obviously we can analyse that and decide what we would take off a certain part. Punters, yeah. and okay. that's just a business decision. So we, we, we had an incident on uh, earlier this week. It was a, that Paul Nichols horse that was running for the first time, one of the triumphs. Dildar. Oh, Dildar, that's the one, that's the one. I bet the uh, second each way killed me. Yeah. Um, somebody wanted a large sum on that, and it was, it was a, a, a lower price, was a lower uh, stake was suggested, and it was about an internal argument about it, but you, you know, that kind of thing where you never saw a horse in public, you've got, obviously got to be really mm. careful about yeah. how, how you trade it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, because but... You may have an information deficit, in fact. Okay, let's Absolutely. just quickly look at yeah. the odds for the Six Nations then. This is to win the competition. Um, France are the favourites. Yeah, Blue Square still best price there, 13 to 8. My friend's on at 7 to 4 and 13 to 8, and I think 6 to 4 is generally now. And I think the Racing Post tipped it today at 13 to 8, so... Yeah, I, th I think the way that we've shaped our market is that we want to be with uh, we want to be with England and with Wales. Wales off the back of money that we've already laid, and uh, and England is just it's just the view of our trader that they they can't be as bad as they were at the World Cup. Nigel, do you follow the rugby? Yes, I do. Yeah, I'm looking for it. Right. And from um, from a betting point of view, how do you see the market? Well, I think France are obviously the, the rightful favourites over the World Cup semi-finalists and should have should have probably beaten New Zealand in that World Cup final. But uh, all the money for us has been for Ireland. We've seen an awful lot of people asking us to back Ireland at five to one into four to one. They didn't have the greatest uh, World Cups and they're without O'Driscoll, which is going to be a big test for them. But I mean, it, it's one of these things that it, England look at it sometimes, and I don't think they, they look at it. It's a building process. They look at it as not really taking it as seriously as they would do, because they build up for the World Cups and they build up for the. The bigger competitions, and I don't. I think this is a tournament that's probably lost its uh, its passion as much as it had to do three or four years ago. But on the on the outright, it's all around two teams for us. We see money for France, we see money for Ireland. England totally friendless, and the last time they were totally friendless, they went on and won it. So that's a that's a bit of a omen for them. But on the matches, there's been an awful lot of interest on the on the matches, particularly the Scotland uh, uh, England game. As a complete outsider who doesn't really follow rugby, it just seems to me that with so few games, there must be a decent amount of variance. Involved. I mean, I'm not. I'm not sure. I'd, well, I'm not sure how excited I'd be about betting six figures on it. It, it. it all depends on obviously on fixture list. Obviously, who they play away from home and at home. And it looks as though France have been handed a very easy, easy sort of looking set of fixtures. But what what happens in these games is that the last group of games are totally different. How you bet them now because there's a lot of teams yeah, are not to play for. So on paper, France look like they've got the easiest task. But if um, if they struggle early doors, it'll be a lot lot different. But I mean. The Scotland England game, for example, I don't know if you want me to, to go on about that at the moment. Yeah, go on. The, uh, say, say a piece on that. We'll have a look at the Calcutta Cup odds. Same two teams in the final. Um, <laughs> well, this, this to me represents one of the, the best bet betting events of the weekend. Now, 
Uh, Channers and I always like going on things that are under, where we always go against the public and look at support that we're, we go against the I trend. Find, I, I agree with you. If you're going to say this is a low-scoring game, I've got to agree with you, Nigel. I've already bet the draw at half-time here, and uh, I think I think 6-3, 3-3, 3-0, 0-0 at half-time, that's you've the got, kind of score you're going to get. You, you've got here, Challenge, you've got the last 10 meetings they've, they've played, the, the average points is 28 mm. in the last 10 matches. They played in the World Cup as well, and they scored a last-minute try. Uh, there's, there's only been one game when there's been more than 36 points, that was the 38 points, so you can back on the 36 and a half points at, uh, at 5 to 6 or 10 to 11 around that market. And also the draw in the match, there's been two draws in the last 10 matches between these sides, 10 to 1, very low score, and they'll kick everything, there'll be no... There'll be no uh, be no tries in this I, game. I like the half time draw better at kind of 12 to 1 because they always start tentatively and sometimes it opens up a bit more in the second half. We've got the winning margins uh, prices up it, there. Anything it, there? It's a great. Also, there's also World Channel's no try score as well. Yeah, yeah, That's another, yeah, another match. 25 Everything to negative 1. in this game. The, weather, the weather's going to be absolutely freezing. I'm it's with gonna... you. I totally agree. I, although I would just say I was kind of surprised that England are only two point favourites. I, I thought, if anything, I would have thought they'd have been nearer to sort of three and a half, four point favourites. But. We've, we've well, I mean, they always struggle in this game. It's, 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 they, they always they manage to get through it eventually, but it's always a very, very tight game against the Scots up, up there. And uh, I think it just comes down to a kicking contest. I mean, the, mm. the handicap I'd probably swerve because I just I, I think it could go anyway. But definitely under three and a half tries, anything you negative. You got me. I'm there. I'm there with you. Negative on that game. I mean, there's a big thing. Down. There's a big thing on the points because um, our line on total tournament points is six oh one and a half. There's another bookmaker out there with 609 and a half and the under looks fantastic value with them mm. at 609 and a half because mm. if you notice towards the end of the Rugby World Cup, as soon as the bigger teams started to meet each other, the scoring went down. Mm. I mean, what was yeah. the final? It was, only, it was thought, under 20 points seven. in the I final. I thought Labrooks, uh, Labrooks, were, doing, uh, <laughs> Labrooks were a but, bit um, too high with the tries as well. I think it was under 55 and a half tries. Well, so I we're we're basically we don't pass betters on the Six Nations. We're betting basically, the negative. That's on it. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. There you go. Under, under six hundred. Yeah. I consider that covered, and I'm shamelessly moving on to my favourite sport uh, on today's slate, which is the American Football Super Bowl is happening. A massive, massive betting heat in America. Of course, not quite so big over here in the UK, but a ludicrous amount of money be wagered on this in America. And the funny thing is, of course, on quite stupid bets, a lot of mm. it, um, as opposed to just like the win bet. Prop bets are huge and I was gonna business. I was gonna ask Neil a question about this. Yeah. Now, do you think because every firm in the UK has to come out with a massive range of specials, if you take your time as someone that looks at it week in, week out, do you find little niches in the, in those specials? You see these you shoes. You see these shoes? <laughs> I have walked for miles this week. <laughs> Absolutely. I thought you say you bought them with the profits of I've last been year. in every <laughs> betting shop in London. Because these prop bets, they are okay. absolutely clueless. Let's, the let's, let's cover off, that's, that's uh, going to be really interesting. Let's just cover off the prices on the match. The match itself. Let me, let match me say, which can I, I say something really... about the market? Because, yeah, um, of first of all, uh, the money's all on the day. 10% of the money that's going to be bet on the Super Bowl has currently been bet. That's amazing. And 90% is going to come in the next you know, 48 hours. Right. So we haven't seen anything yet, basically. Uh, the New England Patriots, prior to the semi-final games, uh, the championship games, people were talking that the New England, if they get to play the Giants in the final, the line will be roughly five and a half, maybe six. Mm. Uh, now, the way the games were played out, the championship games, uh, the bookmakers in, in the Caribbean, who are really the main market in this, uh, put up the prices at th the Patriots by three and a half. Uh, and what happened was some of the betting syndicates saw that if it was going to go one way, they didn't really care if it went to four or four and a half. That wouldn't make much difference to them. But if it went under three, the significant number, the favourite winning by three happens in 15% of American football matches, uh, that, that would present them with an opportunity. So they grabbed the plus three and a half thinking to themselves, if the public latch onto these giants, which we think they will, mm. uh, then possibly the line will hit two and a half and we'll be able to give ourselves a middle spot. The, the holy middle. And they, <laughs> that's basically what they've done. Not too many people got on at the, the plus three and a half, but those that did have now middled it. But what's going to happen on Sunday is that every mug punter in Vegas is going to be on the giants. Uh, so far, the bets on the money line, that's just the, the straight to win the match, are running at around about 72% 
going for the Giants, even though they're the underdog at five to four. I, I mean, I said to you before the show, I've never seen a big sporting occasion where one team's been talked about and talked up so much, and they're not the favourites. Well, if you're, it's a great if you're, story, isn't it? The Giants, if, 25 if, to 1 at the start. Of the if you're a visitor yeah. to Vegas and you're just a cash punter going into a Vegas uh, you know, sports book, uh, you don't want someone explaining to you, you know, what's this, minus two and a half, plus three and a half. This is amazing. You know, I, I just want to bet the Giants to win, mate. That's what I yeah. want. There's my $20. Is this, is this Liverpool against Tottenham? You know, is it... Is it, mm. the, it is a little the, bit, the I New guess. York Giants yeah, Liverpool yeah, it is a little uh, bit. It's a, fu it's a funny Super Bowl and it's really interesting because it's competitive, mm. I think. Everyone's yeah. got a view. Flash, you've, you've been talking up the Patriots from a betting point of view for a couple of weeks. How do you feel about the Super Bowl? Uh, I think you've been a bit harsh for a couple of weeks because obviously I was <laughs> right from the start of the season. Yes, you were. I had to listen to the 49ers from you lot and anyone else <laughs> but the Patriots. So I think um, I just see the Patriots being far too classy, far too many options. Uh, Bill Belichick's probably one of the best uh, coaches there's ever been. And they've got a couple of boys that are coming back from injuries. And, and, and you boys think it's going to be close. So I think uh, I've wrote two scores down. I think 31-17 to the Patriots, which obviously a 14-point spread, and a 31-20 to the Patriots, obviously being 11. So I'm not worried about your twos, your threes, or your sevens. So I'm, I'm with the Patriots all the way. And Tom Brady to be MVP, which how, I think is just a given. How big are you on this flash? Because the Giants are, the Giants are a 9-7 team, right? They're... they're they, they've got they've got hot, and if you looked at the 49ers game, that was a pretty, in a lot of ways, a lucky win for them. Yeah, but I just think that when when I've watched the uh, New York Giants, they're really big at the front, and the the teams that have been big at the front against uh, the Patriots, they've just sort of slants for Welka. Get your mm. tight ends in. We know that Gronkowski might be carrying an injury, but they've got so many weapons. I know Hernandez, he's another one that they think might be have a really big game. I just think they've got too many options. And then with Brady in, in the pocket, he can do anything he wants. OK, fantastic. Uh, Neil, do your favourite props. OK, here we go. Um, so I did some research uh, a couple of weeks ago. We were talking about this. The second they named the teams, we started talking about this. Well, I did. You were listening. Um, you're going to have to spit out what they six, are. 16 think. games this year, New England won the toss eight times. Every single time they put the other team into bat. Uh, 16 games this year, the New York Giants won the toss nine times, and every single time they went first. So we're saying that the Giants are going to get the ball first. So I bet yes. the Giants to score first, the Giants to have the first penalty, the Giants to have the first punt. Anything to do with the Giants getting the ball first is what I want to be on. There's about an 80% chance of that happening, right? I, I, to me, it feels like 95%. Okay. Amazingly, a lot of firms leave up the, the which team will score first. I noticed this last year, probably had a yeah, after couple the, of after dodgy bits, after, the, after the, the coin toss. toss. Do they? Incredible. But I Incredible. can tell you, it doesn't matter what the toss is, Alan. We know the result of the toss. It doesn't matter who wins, the Giants are going to get the ball. Because if the Patriots win, they're going to go, OK, you're starting off. And if the Giants win, the they're fact, going, OK, yeah, we're starting off. Just the fact, after that decision no, you're right, has been made right. whether to kick or to receive, mm. um, the, the, the market's still there. Mm. That's amazing. So you've obviously got the, the advantage with the team that's receiving first, even yeah. if it comes, goes to the... And I would say, though, I would say, Flash, if, if, you, if, you haven't had a, if you haven't had a lot of bets on the Patriots yet, and you're thinking about having bets on the day... Maybe you should wait until after they do the coin toss because I'm telling you the Giants will get the ball first and the Betfair market will move massively in favour of the Giants and then you can bet the Patriots. Especially if they score. Fantastic. Um, lots of luck if you're betting on the Super Bowl. Uh, I'm going to get Neil after the break to tell us the length of the national anthem bet because that's one of my favourites. Uh, after the break, all of the punter-specific picks will find the value for you. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the last part of The Punter. We're going to get some specific picks from our experts right now. We'll start with Flash, Gordon Watson and Flash's five. Uh, How did you get on last week? We didn't do that at the top of the show, Flash. Uh, four out of five. Um, yeah, one obviously let me down. But the, the worst thing is, it was one of my... Uh, more positive bets because Wimbledon were at home to Aldershot. Aldershot, I don't think, had scored in six games, and uh, Wimbledon went down. So, but the rest were okay. Stoke away at Derby. Stoke are quite strong, obviously in the FA Cup. They feel as if that's a way they could possibly get into Europe. Uh, Brentford uh, beat Wickham. Shrewsbury won earlier on in the day away at uh, Hereford, and Reading beat Bristol City. So four out of five. Great stuff. Keeping up a really good hit rate. So take us into this week and your tips for this week. OK, Queen's Park Rangers, I don't normally go into the Premiership because obviously it is so trappy and so dangerous for, uh, for the accumulator, but Queen's Park Rangers at home, uh, Sheffield Wednesday at home, uh, Shrewsbury at home, 
and then I've gone for France to win the uh, Six Nations and New England Patriots minus uh, three and a half or three, whatever it is. You've mixed so your it, sports, I like it. Yeah, because it gives people a bit of an interest. I mean, you're going to have the uh, free events on Saturday, then you've got New England Patriots on Sunday and you've got France to, uh, to finish off your accumulator over the next uh, six weeks. Fantastic, Flash. Thank you for that. We'll uh, no get some more from you next week. Have a good weekend. Enjoy. And uh, Neil, winning money for children. Oh, money for children, yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I, I'm trying to remember what I, what I went for now. I think I had uh, an NFL bet and, uh, and a rugby bet. So the rugby bet, I've gone for uh, France to win their game on the handicap. They're uh, minus 19. Some of the firms are doing... Minus 19. E yeah, some of the firms are doing evens each of two uh, with the horrible handicap tie, obviously, at mm. 16 to 1. But it's a bit nicer than looking at 10 to 11 each of two. So um, I think France minus 19 is fair against Italy. And uh, this what is one... this that you found? Distance of the shortest touchdown yeah, in the Super Yeah, I'm basically Bowl. saying that the shortest touchdown will be a one-yard touchdown. It's best price five to six with Blue Square. I think it's also... Uh, it might be that price with Bet365 as well. Um, Labrooks are four to five if, you, if you're if looking to slip it around betting shops like I've been doing this week. Um, <laughs> it, it basically comes in every year. Um, and every year the punters back over. Uh, and people just look at it and think, wow, how can that happen? But you always get some pass interference penalty and the ball gets spotted on the one yard line or a, qu and a right. quarterback sneak and whatever. It doesn't happen every year, obviously. But it, it, I, I think if you look at something like 16 out of the last 20, it's, uh, it's been a winning bet. Uh, nice. And obviously, the higher the points and the more touchdowns there are, the more chance. And this is the highest scoring Super Bowl of all time. People think it's the highest scoring. I think so, I quite like the under in it, I have to say. Um, Chris, you got a football bet you like? Yeah, I, I think it's probably five to one to get sacked for saying this, but I just think uh, QPR to beat Wolves. Uh, oh, wow, so you and Flash both like it. Yeah, I thought Sounds I like Flash a reason to go. Sounds for lumping up. Yeah. A, lot of, <laughs> a lot of optimism about QPR at the moment, a lot of negativity around Molyneux at the moment. Please God, I'm wrong, but QPR at 90 10 for me makes me get excited. And no one at Wolves knows that Sporting Bet have. Because you sponsor, it, you sponsor them, right? Yeah. yeah. Hopefully, no one watches this program or <laughs> yeah. in trouble. Right? Only the whole office, you're fine. <laughs> uh, Al, what have you got for us? Your football well, talking tips of have been going great. Talking of sponsorships, yeah, our Blue Square Bet Premier um, bet came in last week with Mansfield. Um, weather permitting this weekend, there are a few fixtures that I've got my eye on. Um, one's already bit in the dust with the weather. Um, I fancy Geisley at Cambridge, but that, that one's bit in the dust. But uh, Kidderminster at home against the Luton team in the FA Trophy. Luton will definitely rest players. They've got a big squad. They'll definitely rest players. It's not their priority. Their priority is obviously promotion. Um, so 15 to 8 for a home win for Kidderminster is a very decent Fantastic. Bet. And um, we've got our weather series, which is continuing power in the racing coverage throughout the weekend, which will obviously be uh, all the jumps you're gonna, racing. You're going to save off. the day with and, some racing. Uh, mm. We're still refunding under a beaten under a length in our sprint series, which is a crazy offer, absolutely crazy. We, we're shipping the money away because there's sprints at Lingfield where they're just blanket finishes like that. I think Great six, special. Out, six out of the last four we've refunded. I've got 20 seconds, Neil. What's the national anthem length? Am I supposed to be uh, going over One minute 34, I'm betting under. Last year, the woman, uh, uh, I love Christine Aguilera, she got, it, she she got the words the wrong. She, yeah, she got the words <laughs> wrong. People said she was an insult to the flag. So I think this year, it's Kelly Clarkson. I think she won <laughs> okay. American Idol. So we're going, we're going under. She's going to get through we're going it quickly. Over. We're going under. We're going under. We, under. we think she's just going to get through it quickly. All right, my big thanks to uh, Flash, to the betting butler, to Chris, Allen and Neil in the studio. Have a really good weekend. Looks like a weekend to wrap up warm. Uh, bet your nuts off and enjoy the sport. We'll see you next time on The Punter. Stay ahead of the game with Sports Tonight Live. Don't miss a thing. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Search for Sports Tonight Live on Facebook and like our fan page. Follow Sports Tonight TV on Twitter and tweet us your thoughts and opinions. Sports Tonight Live, it's the platform for the fans.